Here's your wrestling news for September 22nd, 2020. And your headlines for today include Retribution to have their first pay-per-view match at Clash of Champions, opponents revealed. WWE announced two new matches at Clash of Champions 2020. New details about Jeff Hardy's WWE contract. Robert Roode set to make WWE return soon. Cody Rhodes denied American Dream phrase. Edge and Daniel Bryan's WWE writing responsibilities have changed. Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss take big shot at Jim Cornette. Shinsuke Nakamura's cancer line was not meant to air on WWE Raw. Is the new storyline involving Dominic Mysterio derailing his push? AEW confirmed signing of former WWE wrestler and more. We are kicking off with huge news from Retribution, as after months of destroying Raw, it was announced that they've signed contracts with WWE. Now, if they destroy WWE property, it won't be as a group of radicals, but instead as contracted superstars, and we even got names for the group members. The three male members were introduced as Mace, played by Dio Madden, T-Bar, aka Dominic Dijakovic, and Slapjack, who's portrayed by Shane Thorne, whilst Mia Yim and Mercedes Martinez had new masks, but weren't identified. Entering the Thunderdome through the virtual crowd to no music, Yim said that despite being official superstars, they wouldn't be stopped, while T-Bar said they were here to destroy WWE and rebuild in their own image. The segment ended with the Hurt Business coming out, though they were taken out by secondary Retribution members, and T-Bar and Mace laid out the US champion Bobby Lashley with a double choke slam. Umberto Carrillo and Titus O'Neil felt Retribution's wrath later in the show, though the Hurt Business took out more secondary members in another segment. This culminated in a main event match with Mace, T-Bar, and Slapjack facing Cedric Alexander, Shelton Benjamin, and Lashley, which ended in a DQ when T-Bar, who wasn't the legal man, attacked Lashley. Post-match, the entirety of Retribution attacked the Hurt Business, though Drew McIntyre led the Raw roster to make the save, but he was laid out by his Clash of Champions opponent, Randy Orton. Speaking of the pay-per-view, it's been reported by the Wrestling Observer that Retribution vs. The Hurt Business match could main event Survivor Series. More from Raw, and though it seemed like Murphy and Seth Rollins were finished after last week's attack, the two teamed together this week to face Andrade and Angel Garza, and Dominic Mysterio and Umberto Carrillo. Unsurprisingly, Andrade and Garza got the win, and will challenge the Street Profits for the Raw Tag Team titles for what feels like the 100th time. And though it was believed that the duo would win the gold at SummerSlam, WWE kept the Street Profits as champions, though their reign may end this Sunday. Outside of this, though, what was interesting is that during this week's Triple Threat tag, Seth Rollins abandoned Murphy mid-match, adding to the rumors that the pair are through. However, it's also been reported that these acts of splitting are just to get Aaliyah Mysterio on their side, as Rollins doesn't seem content enough to take Rey Mysterio's eye, but now has plans to take Rey's daughter, too. This wasn't the only match added to this Sunday's pay-per-view, as the WWE held a number one contenders match on this week's Raw to see who will face Asuka. After Mickey James' controversial loss and Zelina Vega confronting the Raw Women's Champion afterwards last week, Vega and James faced off this week, a match that Vega won. It was later announced that this match will take place on Sunday's kickoff show, and we'll have to see how Vega fares against Asuka. Over to SmackDown now as Jeff Hardy revealed to BT Sport that he signed a new deal with WWE, and though it was believed to be a five-year contract, that isn't the case. In the past, WWE have insisted on talent having long-term deals, though Jeff's case is an exception, as PW Insider reports that his new contract is around two to three years in length. This deal also includes time from his previous contract where Jeff didn't compete due to injury-related activity, as well as his hiatus due to his legal trouble. At the moment, Jeff is in his fifth reign as Intercontinental Champion, recently defeating AJ Styles in the Thunderdome, but what are your predictions for Jeff's future? Leave your views in the comments below. Whilst fans will get to see plenty of the charismatic enigma, one person they haven't seen in a while is Robert Roode, though that could soon change. According to WrestleVotes, Roode is expected to make a return to WWE TV within the next week or two, after he's been absent since March, with his last appearance being at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. 
Given the ongoing global situation, travel between the US and Canada has been extremely limited, but fans could be prepared to see one of the Great White North's favorite sons make a comeback. In June, Rude was traded to Raw alongside Dolph Ziggler, and though it's unclear if the former NXT and US Champion will be paired with Ziggler when he returns, this is great news for fans of the Glorious One. Over to AEW now, and though Cody Rhodes has tried to trademark anything his legendary father was part of, the nickname The American Dream continues to elude him. After filing for a trademark back on March 10, 2019, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office still believes that Cody hasn't presented enough of a case to warrant the trademark, marking the third refusal the former TNT champion has had. The most recent request for reconsideration after final action denial was submitted on August 20th, as Heel by Nature reported, the reason behind the rejection was due to Rhodes not providing appropriate documentation showing the American dream used in entertainment services, specifically live appearances and appearances by a professional wrestler. The previous submission stated that Cody was bewildered as to why the filing keeps getting rejected, and according to the court's reports, Cody's latest attempt failed to present the following. Raise a new issue, resolve all the outstanding issues, provide any new or compelling evidence with regard to the outstanding issues, present analysis and arguments that were persuasive or shed new light on the outstanding issues. Hopefully Cody will figure things out soon, as he wants to secure as many properties associated with Dusty Rhodes and locking down the American Dream would be a huge win for him at this point. Back to WWE and this year has seen huge changes to the company's writing teams. Following Paul Heyman's dismissal as Raw's executive director, the two main roster writing teams were merged, but now these teams have reportedly been split once again. It's worth noting that there are a few exceptions of writers who work both shows, and that both shows remain under Bruce Prichard's control. Two men who have been affected by this split are Edge and Daniel Bryan, who have both been working on the WWE's writing team, and now Edge will work with Raw's team and Bryan with SmackDown. Of course, neither man has been attending WWE events lately, as Edge is recovering from his triceps injury, whilst Brian is spending time with his growing family, though both can attend meetings online. 2020 has truly been a strange year for WWE, as shows have had to happen without live fans for months, and if Raw and SmackDown seem more different to each other from now on, now you know why. More from AEW next, and it's no secret that Joey Janela isn't a favorite of Jim Cornette, and the bad boy isn't afraid of rustling Cornette's feathers either, something that was made quite evident this week. Janela has revealed that his and Sonny Kiss's team name is the new New Midnight Express, a play on the team Cornette managed and that AEW have given them permission. The first Midnight Express was Dennis Condry and Randy Rose, with the second being Condry, Bobby Eaton and Stan Lane, with Cornette as a manager. Now, the new New Midnight Express is Janela and Kiss, and though it usually takes thought to put together a team name, Janela and Kiss were able to figure out the perfect name, whilst also sticking it to someone who's clearly not a fan. Speaking of tag teams, fans saw the Street Profits defeat Andrade and Angel Garza on the September 7th Raw, but they were also confronted by SmackDown's tag team champions Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. Though the match was to set up a Champions vs. Champions match the next week, Nakamura used some interesting verbiage, saying, if they want smoke, they will get cancer. Using the term cancer on WWE TV doesn't seem to fly, and though Nakamura can't be blamed for a pre-written promo, sources have revealed that it wasn't the original line. The report pointed out that almost immediately after, Michael Cole said, Cesaro and Shin saying if they want smoke, they're gonna get some here tonight, fixing what had happened. Many have been wondering how Nakamura got the wrong line, and sources have revealed that someone forgot to alter their version of the script that was handed to the King of Strong Style. The report revealed, We were told that the cancer line was not supposed to make it onto the show, but with so much happening behind the scenes, someone simply forgot to use a different version of Nakamura's promo. Thankfully, there was no mention of backstage heat on Nakamura, and it was chalked up to so much happening backstage that nobody double-checked. This chaotic atmosphere backstage has become the new normal, with reports of Vince McMahon rewriting entire Raws himself without much time left, now that Paul Heyman was relieved as executive director after nearly a year. 
Normally, scripts pass through a filter, though that didn't happen this time. And whilst Nakamura didn't get in trouble, WWE will no doubt be watching his scripts more closely from now on. We've got Edge news next as older fans will remember the Rated R Spinner Championship of 2006, though it could have looked much different. During Edge and John Cena's WWE Untold on the network, the Rated R superstar admitted that he hated the idea of the spinner belt and spoke about receiving his own custom title, saying, When they approached me and said, we're going to do a Rated R Championship belt, I was like, right, let me get to work. I got home and drew up this beautiful championship belt. This thing was the design Edge came up with is certainly far different to the spinner belt, with the center plate more akin to the Intercontinental title design that was retired last November, but the Hall of Famer explained how his design was rejected, saying, When I got back, they were like, well, no, we're just going to put your logo on it. Like, that's it? Edge wouldn't want a spinner belt? That, to me, is the one championship that needs to look like a championship and not somebody's hubcaps. Edge's rated R spinner was retired at Unforgiven 2006. And whilst the Rated R Spinner has gone on to be sold as a replica by WWE, perhaps one day the ultimate opportunist will get to see the title he truly wanted become a reality. More from Raw next, as this week's show has what's being described as one of the weakest, most cringe-inducing segments of the year. The segment in question saw Seth Rollins appear on the show with what looked to be a fake DNA test, and after running down Ray's relationship with Dominic, revealed that Ray isn't Dominic's biological father. This isn't news to older fans, as Ray explained he went through this quote BS with Eddie Guerrero in 2005, but then Rollins twisted things around, suggesting that Aaliyah isn't Ray's daughter either, upsetting her greatly. Rollins explained himself by saying that he was looking over Mysterio family photos on WWE.com when he was inspired to investigate their family ties. The architect also brought up that she went to Murphy in concern in last week, though we're not sure what the implication is. After a few segments on Raw, the Mysterios were seen backstage, and a visibly upset Aaliyah said that she was only there to support Dominic, who sat there silently. Sitting there silently isn't exactly the best way for Dominic to act, especially after his SummerSlam debut and subsequent matches received rave reviews by fans. And we can't help but feel that this new angle with his sister is derailing his push. The tension between the Mysterios wasn't helped by the fact that Ray described Aaliyah as a naive 19-year-old, which caused her to storm out, and fans even saw Murphy apologize to her for hurting her in any way. It's been rumored that there are plans for Aaliyah to align with Murphy and Rollins, which will continue the current storyline as Dominic and Ray will fight to get her back, but for now, fans can expect to see a lot more of the Mysterios on screen, and hopefully, Dominic will be allowed to speak. And we're ending with news from AEW, as despite losing to Thunder Rosa a few weeks ago, Serena Deeb got a lot of attention on Dynamite, and it won't be the last time we see her. After Chris Jericho said that it's likely the veteran would be signed, the company revealed that she has indeed inked a contract, and is now a part of AEW. Time will tell how the former Straight Edge Society member fares in AEW, as she's got a ton of abilities. And after working as a trainer in WWE's Performance Center until earlier this year, her versatile resume will be very useful in AEW.